Hello, good evening, good morning, good afternoon, depending on where you are. Welcome back to Pencils and Stories. It's a new year, um, 2021. I know it's after a rocky start for some of you. I know the majority of my viewers come from America. Um, hang in there. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm so sorry about what happened and I'm sorry that the year isn't off to, to the good start, but I hope better things will come for you in the future. Um, so yeah, another live stream. I thought, hi, Natalie. Oh, there's already people live. Thank you so much for tuning in live. Um, yeah, uh, this is a series of live streams that I'm going to do. Um, the YouTube live stream engine is really the best compared to OBS, but that makes uh, live drawing and stuff like that a little bit hard, but I might, you know, do some top-down view eventually and do some drawing for you during these live streams. But during the course of January, February, and probably March, I will be doing uh, weekly live streams. Um, just because I'm working on my Kickstarter. Uh, I finished the Kickstarter page, finished the Kickstarter video yesterday. I'm going to send it off for review to Kickstarter today. So that's super exciting. But that means that I'm going to do um, more live streams and little, um, you know, like less pre-recorded video for you. But I hope these live streams are interesting. I promise to come up with interesting themes every single week. Um, if you don't know me, my name is Henrike. I make and teach comics. So we're talking comics every week on this channel. And this week is all about how to start your comic when you don't feel that your art is there yet. Your art isn't good enough yet for making comics. Um, and I want to, I have some tips for you today and I want to speak a little more, um, you know, on that subject. Uh, I've definitely felt this way before. Um, I started before I started my webcomic Red Collection City. I had another webcomic that I was trying to do. Um, and I had a very elaborate style. It was very much kind of the same style that I'm doing now. It's just that now that I can, <laughs> I can actually pull it off now. And I really couldn't back then. Uh, so I do... I do know what it feels like when, you know, your own art skill is holding you back uh, and it looks completely different than it does in your head. And that's very frustrating. Um, yeah, so first I want to say, try and not let it hold you back. It, I let me, um, it, I, I let it hold me back. Um, when I was doing that older webcomic that I was talking about, I... I just eventually I got so overwhelmed by not being able to do what I wanted to do that I quit. Uh, and that's actually also when my art block started. <laughs> so um, first of all, try and, you know, either push through it and, uh, you know, learn as you go and try to not be as upset as I was <laughs> with the lack of quality, with the lack of skill. Um, but I know that it's hard. And that's why my first tip is going to be that um, if, you are doing a larger comic project especially, um, but also if you plan on doing maybe a more elaborate style, make it very realistic, maybe rethink that a little bit and go for a little bit simpler style. There's amazing comics on this planet that, that have a very, very simple style. You can actually get very emotive and very deep with simpler styles as well. You can even make a black and white comic, just inks, you know. Um, some people even did sketch comics. I've seen some really great sketch comics that actually gained a pretty large audience. So don't let it discourage you if you feel like, you know, it, I know we see a lot of that amazing art online all the time. First of all, illustration and comics are very different things. People spend weeks on one illustration. It will look amazing and beautifully painted in a comic that's harder to do. Even comics that I see that are like fully painted, either they have like a large contract with a publisher and they have the time to spend on that. Or in the case of let's say Scurry or the Warm World Saga, you see actually that the artists are still keeping the style relatively simple, even though they're playing with a lot of texture and a lot of lighting, which makes it look really amazing. Um, but still, you know, it, it's, I wouldn't say cartoony, but the style is still in a way like they still have a style that is relatively quick to do and relatively easy to do. Um, so that is that is my first tip. Like, don't overwhelm yourself, because if you are constantly overwhelmed with working on your pages and you're constantly running into stuff that you cannot do yet, um, that's going to be demotivating. And it actually might 
for like it might actually cause you to quit. So that is my first tip. Like um, try a simpler style first. And on that same vein, it might be good to first do a little assessment. And you can even do this if you just started your comic. I was, I think with the old comic, I was 12 pages in. And then I was like, oh, I can't do it anymore. And I quit entirely. 12 pages is not that big of a deal. You can still switch styles within your comic. I've seen it happen a lot of times, especially when you're doing a web comic. People are very forgiving. You know, they just want to know the story. <laughs> they just want to know what happens. And, uh, you know, they evolve with you, with your art. It's another point I wanted to make, um, especially with webcomics. I see people be very forgiving. There's this older webcomic that is long since finished, but I, you know, I was still reading it when it was still updating called, it was Infralog. Um, it was by Sarah Ellerton. I don't know if you remember her. Uh, some of the <laughs> people have been, you know, reading webcomics since they basically appeared on the internet might remember her. She had, um, she had a really great fantasy comic. It was, it was very entertaining. The story was intriguing. I, I'll just say it at first, the art wasn't that great. It wasn't really bad either, but the art wasn't, you know, amazing. Later on, her art became so much better. And that is part of, I think, the charm of webcomics that you see the evolution of the artist, you see the art develop. And then, you know what I really like? When I find a new webcomic, it has amazing art. Then I click the first page and the art just, <laughs> you know, degrades in front of your eyes. That sounds really, really bad. I don't mean it in a bad way, you know? Art is, art is a thing that evolves. Art is a thing that gets better over time. You know, it ages like a good wine. So, you know, I appreciate that. I love looking at a comic first page and then look at the last page and see that really great development. And I know that the artist, you know, they put in all the hours and they put in all the work and they became better. And there's nothing that makes your art better than comics. <laughs> you know, you're, you're really forced to draw so many things, you know, all of the backgrounds and perspective and, you know, good compositions and, and, you know, it really challenges you as an artist. So I think they're a really great way to improve but it might be good at first when you start or when you're not that far in yet, but you feel overwhelmed to actually make a list of your strengths and weaknesses um, when it comes to art. So list all of the stuff that you love to draw might not necessarily be the stuff you're good at drawing, but you know, it's, it's something that might actually motivate you to get really good at because you love drawing it. Um, you know, list all the things that you are good at drawing. Uh, what is your natural tendency to um, you know, want to draw. For example, for me, I love drawing organic shapes because I <laughs> I just have really trouble with pulling a straight line. I'm getting better at it, but it takes so much time. Like, I love drawing plants. I love drawing, you know, like little scribbles everywhere, little textures and stuff. Uh, if you know that of yourself, you can make use of that in your art style. You can make use of that in your comic. Uh, same with weaknesses. You know, um, if you really, really, really hate drawing hands, you actually might want to start a comic about, you know, a little cute critter that has no hands, you know, in the most extreme case. I'm not saying that you, you know, you should uh, avoid drawing things, but sometimes, um, especially when, you know, when it, when it really starts to... Um, feel like a chore to do it might not be the best thing especially for a first comic to immediately go draw all the things that you don't know how to draw or you don't like to draw um that said you can gradually introduce things that are more challenging um so yeah that is that is a thing that that might be good to um to examine at least for yourself what do i really like to draw what is stuff that I'm good at drawing and then do that. Um, and then um, two tips for, you know, improvement in your comic. I know that, um, at least for me, I really approach comics too as a way to improve my artwork. Um, you know, I would love to do all of these <laughs> one-shot illustrations and all the projects and stuff, but I know that my comic actually really helps me improve. And when I look at the first page of my current webcomic and I look at the last page, I see definite improvement. I'm not sure if everybody can see it, um, but at least me and I think most artists will 
uh, say that I definitely improved, especially when it comes to inking. Inking is a very weak, weak point for me. Um, so yeah, comics are a really, really great way to do that. And some of the ways that you can actually use your comic to improve your artwork is first of all, use all the reference. <laughs> I'm, you, you will hear me say this all the time. Reference, reference, reference. Use as much reference as you can. I can promise you if you do for like 10 pages, if you just use just a lot of reference for every single background that you draw, I can promise you that your backgrounds over those 10 pages will improve. It might not be drastic, but it might be a small improvement. Um, you know, build up the visual library, but also get really good at analyzing shapes, analyzing, you know, how things are constructed, what they look like in 3D, all of that stuff. You could do that so much faster when you use reference. Also, you know, if you want to improve composition, go watch movies and just pause them. You know, you have those, you have some of those movies that have just, you can pause every single frame and every single frame is a picture you can frame on the wall. Um, so go watch those movies, just pause them, see what they did in terms of composition, what they did with the lighting, where are the shadows and stuff? Um, how did they make it look really good? And then, you know, try and apply that into your comic. Those are some exercises that you can do um, to improve your comic. And then if you're working on a comic page itself, um, my best tip, especially if you're overwhelmed at first, is to focus on one thing. So one thing to improve, like in this page or in this scene, I'm going to improve drawing folds in clothing or I'm going to improve perspective drawing, you know. Um, and if you're especially overwhelmed, just focus on one panel. Just say in this panel, I'm really going to fo focus on the perspective. Uh, you know, in this panel, I'm just going to focus on this one expression. I'm going to nail this expression and I'm going to spend a little bit more time on that expression because it's very easy, especially when your art isn't, isn't there yet to take a really long time to draw. Uh, things <laughs> in general. Um, you know, coloring takes a long time, drawing takes a long time. Uh, just, you know, take the most important panel. I've talked about this before in another video. Take your most important panel and just focus on that. Make that really good. Uh, and then spend a little less time on the other panels that are maybe a little bit less important. Um, just so that you can continue and you don't get too overwhelmed. Um, so that's the thing. What I just want to say in general is you will learn comics by doing comics. And by that, I mean your art might not there yet, might not be there yet. It will get there and it will get there faster if you keep making the comics. And, you know, maybe for yourself, sometimes this helps me just decide, well, my first and maybe even my second or my third comic are not going to be amazing. And they're going to be my practice comic. I actually approach Recollection City this way. Um, it might actually also be part of the reason why I don't, you know, I don't have a Patreon associated with it. Um, I might eventually do a Kickstarter, but this comic is not here to make me money. This comic is there for me to make comics, to put it out there on the internet and to improve my art. Um, I think my art improved as much so that I have fairly less trouble drawing most things. I still struggle with perspective. It was a very big weak point of mine up to the point when in my old comic, I would just avoid drawing backgrounds altogether. I would just not draw them <laughs> in panels where they absolutely needed to be there. Um, so that's all definitely improved. I can see a huge improvement in my artwork, but I know that I'm not fully there yet. I know that my art is not you know, super mind blowing yet. It, it's definitely not what I want in my head. So that feeling also kind of never goes away. <laughs> I know a lot of people call it imposter syndrome. I don't necessarily feel like an imposter, but I do know, like objectively, I know that my art can be a lot better than it is. And I'm personally fine with that. Um, I always feel kind of awkward talking about this because I know that there is many artists for who this doesn't feel like that. Um, you know, they see all the amazing artwork online and they, feel like they need to be there in some capacity, but always kind of see the truth, you know, uh, the, uh, try and look at the objective truth that some people are actually older than you 
They have more experience than you. They have maybe mentors on their path that you didn't have. They have more projects under their belts and stuff. Um, you know, you cannot really compare yourself one-on-one -on -one with them. Um, there might be soup, like a lot of reasons why they are further ahead in their art journey than you are. Uh, it also doesn't mean that um, you cannot improve relatively fast. Um, you know, everybody has certain speeds sometimes, and sometimes you improve like this, and sometimes you improve like this. You know, um, that's all fine. It's all, you know, legit. <laughs> so I know it's very hard not to compare yourself to other artists, and especially, you know, you, you, you read other comics, uh, and we, we artists, you know, also read the comics to really enjoy the art. And, you know, I, I definitely can relate. I definitely know what it feels like um, to be further ahead than you are. But, you know, just trust that you will improve. And definitely your comic will help you improve. The more comics you make, you know, the, the more you improve. And sometimes you have a period in which all your pages look the same to you. And that's fine, but then you look back over 100 pages and you see, oh, wow, I actually did improve. Um, so even when your art is not that good yet, if you dare to, if you want to, you know, a lot of people love seeing people progress and seeing people improve. Uh, you can share your art online. Maybe just if you don't feel like your art in itself is too good yet, um, maybe just share what you're learning. You know, just share your process, share your journey. People find that super interesting. So even if your art isn't, you know, maybe you just started with art. Um, I remember that w there was one topic in, I can't remember the forum. I think it's one of those forums that's gone now. But I cannot remember the name. It doesn't really matter. There was a person who wanted to learn digital painting. They had zero painting experience. And for a few years, they updated that topic over and over again, like I think maybe even daily, but it might actually, maybe it's weekly, maybe even da daily, but at least, you know, very regularly they updated that entire topic. It became one of the most popular topics on that forum. Uh, and that, that person actually became such a good painter. It was amazing, but it was really consistent, you know, putting in the work, being really consistent with it. And, you know, even if you're just starting out with comics, Right now you're looking at your comic and you think it's not there yet, but you know, you don't know where you are in five years. You don't know where you are in 10 years. And I know that sounds far off, but if you can learn to appreciate where you are right now and actually just focus on the stuff you need to do and focus on the stuff that you want to improve on your page with the tips I just gave you, then, you know, at least you will have satisfaction and joy and fun you know, doing that and becoming a better artist. Becoming a better artist and practicing is actually is actually fun for most of us. Um, yeah, and comics are a great way. Comics are a great way to do that. So I definitely like, you know, um, super simple style. Again, Order of the Stick, one of the most popular <laughs> comic projects ever. Um, you know, it doesn't have to be super elaborate to hit a nerve with people and to, you know, touch people in some way. Um, you know, if you have a story to tell, why let the art hold you back? As you see, there's some people in the chat. My um, little speech is done. Uh, let's see if there's any questions or good stuff that I can shout out. Thanks so much for joining, Neftali and Strawberry. I love your I love your username so much. It's so awesome. Uh, Totally relatable. I think your style is so cute. I absolutely love it. Oh, thank you so much. Oh, that's so sweet. I feel like I suck compare myself to a bunch of mangaka. Yeah, who probably have a lot more experience than you do. <laughs> like, I want to say to so many of you, like, it's not your fault. <laughs> like, they are older than you or, you know, they had these amazing careers. Well, some of you are having a day job that has nothing to do with art. And then you have so much less hours to work on your artwork than some other people. And it's no no wonder that they progress faster. And you know, if you get a job at, at an art studio with more experienced artists and they give you feedback and critique, then yes, you will you will improve like a ton. Um, yeah, I think, I don't know. I'm not very versed in the world of manga and mangaka, but I think they actually work in studios 
a lot of the time is what I know um, from them, you know, and that they might actually, you know, in that creative space that just, um, you know, you have a lot of, you know, great opportunities for getting feedback and getting critiques and improving your artwork. It's crazy how much you grow by doing exactly. Just around speed drawing, I'm recording my process 15 minutes a day. That is awesome. Can't wait to look back to day one and day 365. Yes. <laughs> oh, that's going to be awesome. That's going to be great. And, you know, celebrate that pro celebrate their progress, you know, celebrate your improvements and stuff. Don't gloss over them because learning art is, is hard. You know, sometimes things just need to click or, you know, you, you need to learn by doing, you need to train your brain, <laughs> you know, to do certain things. Like just with the drawing a straight line, what I just said, I had so much trouble drawing a <laughs> straight line. Um, before and I, I've actually learned some techniques that are really helpful and becoming more confident in my drawing, becoming more confident in my inking, especially really helped me. Um, but I, that all comes with time and doing it a lot. Um, I can definitely see even in Recollection City, I've been drawing comics all my life, but you know, just Recollection City, seeing the improvement, it's very motivating and I can't wait to see where I am in like five to 10 years, <laughs> you know, art wise, that's going to be amazing. Even like, making video wise. <laughs> I just watched a video the other day uh, on my channel and I was like, wow, this is not a really great video. <laughs> and I was like, even in making videos, even though I'm not, I'm not super um, consciously trying to improve my videos. I just try to share the value. But I do know I, I really, ideally I would want to put in more time in editing and getting better at editing and timing and all of that stuff. Um, you know, I also even like the presentation itself, I can improve, like I have so many things I can improve in my videos, but even even in there, just by doing it, I improved. Uh, I see a huge improvement at least, um, you know, in my <laughs> earlier videos and these videos. I see Sean has joined the chat. Hi, welcome. I'm, I'm kind of done talking. <laughs> but I hope you guys found it valuable. If you have any questions, any more questions, put them in the chat box. Um, well, no, the chat box is going to go away soon, but put them in the comments below. Um, you know, or shoot me a message on social media. My Twitter is pencils underscore stories, and my Instagram is pencils and stories. It's one word. Um, yeah, so Kickstarter is coming January 25th. I'm super excited. I. Like I said, I finished the page, I finished the video. I'm super excited to bring you my course on how to start your comic. If you wanna get a little bit of head start and you wanna have a nice checklist that you can use to start your own comic, see all of the stuff that you might wanna check off and things that you need to be thinking about before you start, then go to pencilsandstories.com slash extra and you can download the checklist over there. And stay tuned for the Kickstarter. I'm probably going to talk about it a lot on the YouTube channel in the coming live streams. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm glad to hear that you like the live streams. Uh, it's a little off the cuff. And it's not edited and stuff. Normally, I, I cut out all my ums and stuff. Uh, but yeah, I I hope it's uh, it's valuable. I hope these tips were valuable to you. If you have any tips that really helped you improve as an artist, also post them in the comments below so we can all learn from your experience. Um, yeah, for now, thanks so much for watching. Uh, like the video if you liked it and go and make some comics, guys. Bye. End stream. Yes, I want to end it. <laughs>